In this video, I would like to show you how to use the Global Wind Atlas version 3.1 to navigate to particular areas of interest and also to make your own custom areas. So first of all, I'm going to go to an area I already know ahead of time that I'm interested in exploring. And I'll go to this countries and regions and then write Somalia here. I can just start writing it and it will already search and find a match. When I do that, it then makes the Global Wind Atlas focus on the country of Somalia. And you can see the wind resources here given at uh, as mean wind speed at 100 meters. And this is all very fine, um, but I want to get a bit closer. So I know actually which region I want to look at. And the region I want to look at is Barry. So I put that in there and yes, that's also recognized. And now I'm moving into this region of Somalia called Barry. When I do that, I can get the new update and I can see on the charts on the right, some details about the wind resources in that region. So the first thing that we tell you about is the, the data for the 10% windiest areas. So if we look in this region, as outlined by the white line, we can say of that region, the 10% windiest areas, the mean power density is around 900 watts per meter squared. The mean wind speed is 9.44 meters per second, and all of this is at 100 meters. Um, you can also see the wind rows for this whole region. So you can see winds coming from um, largely from the southwest sector, um, but also sometimes from the north east. If we wanted to get a bit more in depth, um, then we could zoom in a bit more. Um, I'm particularly interested in this island here where there's a lot of uh, resources, but it's a little hard to see it because we're off the legend scale. So I'm going to use the new feature of the legend rescaling and I'm going to add uh, have a new limit which is now going to be 15 meters per second. So that's made it now a bit easier to see the resources on this island. You can see the scale, the legend is now updated. So now if we focus in a bit more now on this island, this island is called Ras Hafun. And now I want to do an analysis that's much more specific to this location. So to do that, I'm going to create my own area. And you can create your own area using uh, these three different options. You can either create a, a, a marker, which is a, a small three by three kilometer area. You can create a rectangle that can be um, custom sized, or you can create a polygon, which is then the points are can form an irregular shape. And that's the option I want to choose for this. So I'm going to tick that one. And now I'm able to define a, an area of my own choosing. So I'm going to make some marks around this area where the wind speeds look quite high. And I want to investigate a bit more about those winds in this area. So I'm just going to make this polygon sort of envelope around these uh, good resource areas. And then I tick there to, to finish it off. When it's finished off, I get it uh, centered and it tells me also the area of that um, of that polygon that I've just made. And whilst uh, I've done that, it also creates and updates the analysis and display that I showed before. So now we can see the area data specifically for this polygon. We can also see the temporal data. And the first one I can show you here is how does the wind speed change from year to year? So we we'll go back to 2008. We can see the mean wind speed, um, how it's changed each year. It's given as a wind speed index, which is saying for the whole period, the mean wind speed is normalized to one. 
and then we got the amount of variation. So it's about a 4% uh, plus or minus 4% variation we get year to year. We can also see how the wind speeds vary according to month of year. And we can see there's a peak um, in month seven, so that's July. So we see that these months, June, July, August, September, have the highest wind speeds. And we can see that also in terms of this wind speed index. So the, um, there's about 60% uh, or, or so, or 80% more winds um, compared to the average in those months. And there are also months where there's less wind, and that's March and April, and also October and November. We can also see the variation of the wind speed according to the time of day. And here we see there's a, uh, a sort of cycle here with the peak happening at between 17 and 18 hundred hours. Um, and this is now in the local time. So you can switch between the UTC, which is the universe uh, time clock, and then the local time, which is this one. Uh, UTC plus three hours. So we can see it's the afternoon and evening hours that tend to have the highest uh, wind speeds. And these are about uh, 10 to 12 percent more than the average wind for the whole day. Um, another way to see all this information is uh, either the radar plot on the bottom here showing the monthly winds and variation during the time of day um, and also this uh, 12 times 24 plots, which also shows the monthly variation here and the the, the um, hour of day variation in this direction. So this is a, can give you um, a nice summary of the variations of, of the wind resource. This um, is all fine, of course, but um, how do we actually uh, get this information um, a bit more onto our own uh, computers and onto our own analysis? Um, we can do that by going to this uh, download button. If we press that, then we have the option to create um, downloads for the area data information and plots that were just shown and the temporal data and information that was just shown. So then you can use uh, those data in your own plots and analysis. Um, you can select two different types of format, the JSON format or the comma separated values format and then you press download to get those. You can also download uh, GIS layers and here you can either, well, you can get the GeoTIFF file format um, and you can also get the polygon described by a JSON, GeoJSON file. And this, this will be, this download for the GIS um, will be dependent on whichever layer you selected here. So, for example, if we selected the capacity factor for an IEC standard um, class two turbine, um, this would also update the uh, the heading and the GIS data that was downloaded. But we'll go back to the mean wind speed. So these are uh, the options for um, downloading, downloading the GIS data. And this means that you can put it into your own analysis program. You can also download the generalized wind climate and this can be then used to do your own microscale modeling maybe with updated maps of surface roughness and elevation. You can use the software uh, WASP and uh, other software to, to read those files. And then finally you have the option to print a nice version of this map as a PDF file um, and you can also include a buffer region. So say if you want to just have a few uh, kilometers uh, added to that uh, region of interest, it can tell you how things vary outside your, your region. And then you press download in order to create the PDF file. Okay, so you've created this region, uh, or you've created this area. Um, you might want to save that for later use um, you might want to share it. And we do have those options in the uh, Global Wind Atlas. So, for example, um, you can save this new area. We'll say yes. And I'm going to give it a name, which will be Ras Hafan
and I'm saving it. So this will save it onto your um, local device in the uh, memory allocated for the for the browser. Um, you can also uh, download it to your, your uh, a folder of your own choice, and you also have options to to share it um, by sharing this link. 